الحمد لله الذي أوصل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد we continue with that which is being narrated by Ibn Abi Hatim al-Razi from his father and his uncle Abu Hatim and Abi Zura al-Raziyain as it relates to the Aqidah, the creed <coughs> of the ulama from various vicinities and that which that they held <coughs> as points of aqidah that the Muslim is obligated to hold and these principles barakallahu feekum are based upon the Quran and the Sunnah and the way of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhu this week they said, Rahimullah, وَمَنْ زَعْمَ أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ كُفْرًا يَنْقُلُ عَنِ الْمِلَّةِ كُفْرًا يَنْقُلُ عَنِ الْمِلَّةِ And that is that uh, they said, Rahimum Allah Ta'ala, and whomsoever holds or claims that the Qur'an is created, then he is a disbeliever. Disbeliever in Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And he is disbelieved. With a disbelief. That takes that individual. Out of the fold of Islam. It removes that individual. From the realms of of al-islam this barakallahu feekum is <clears throat> the first point that we're going to deal with in Allah and that is the affair of the Quran and that it is the kalam of Allah the speech of Allah tabarakallahu wa ta'ala and it is not created and this barakallahu feekum is a consensus that the Ahlul Sunnah hold. Is a consensus, as is mentioned by Qawam al Sunnah, rahimullah Taala, in his book Al Hujja fi Bayan al Mahajja, where he says Qawam al Sunnah, rahimullah Taala, Ajma al Muslimun an al Quran kalam Allah. Ajma al Muslimun. أن القرآن كلام الله that the Muslims meaning the Muslims the ulama from the salaf the tabi'een the atba tabi'een the companions رضي الله عنهم they all held that the Quran is the speech of Allah And that is غير مخلوق And this is not created Which is why these Imams Rahimullah Ta'ala Have said here that وَمَنْ زَعْمَ أَنَ الْقُرْآنَ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ The one who claims that the Quran is created Then he is a kafir Why? Because the Quran is the sifat Sifat min sifat illahi tabaraka wa ta'ala Yani sifat al-kalam It's from the attributes of Allah the Quran is his speech. And Qawam al-Sunnah rahimullah ta'ala, he says, وَإِذَا صَحَ أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ صَحَ أَنَّهُ صِفَةُ اللَّهِ أو صِفَةٌ لِلَّهِ And that is that, once we establish that the Quran is the speech of Allah, then it is indeed an attribute of Allah ta'ala. وَهُوَ مَوْسُوفٌ بِهِ 
is from his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is like an individual when you say Zaid Mutakallim, you say Zaid is speaking, Fal Mutakallim Sifatun Lahu. You said it's part of him, it's part of his speech. Zaid, as you say in the, in the Arabs, will say uh, Zaid Mutakallim, Kama Yitakul al Arab, Zaid uh, is speaking. His speech is his kalam, his sifat. His speech is from his attributes. Ainam. And likewise, the Quran is the kalam of Allah. Wallahu mathalu la a'la. And with Allah is the best of all examples, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And none is equal to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysa ka mithlihi shay, wa huwa samir al basir. Nothing is comparable to him, and he's all. Hearing and seeing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is his sifat, it's from his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in sifatihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is why the Imams, I say, it is kufr. It is disbelief to say that it is created. It is disbelief to say that it's created, the Quran, because it's the kalam of Allah and nothing. And and, 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 and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech is not created. And this is disbelief disbelief in the Quran in itself and the hadith and the narrations from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which Barakallahu Fikum has clearly mentioned the speech of Allah to Barakahu wa Ta'ala. And from them is the statement of Allah in Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 109. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَّفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Where well, he said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 109, say, if the sea was قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي If the sea was the ink right, for the, writing the speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala the sea would finish before the speech of Allah finishes. If the sea was indeed writing the ink, the ink for the speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala the sea would finish before the speech of Allah is finished, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ Even if you came with it again and again, the sea. And this is a proof, barakallahu feekum, this uh, strong verse here in Surah Al-Kahf is affirming the speech of Allah to barakallahu ta'ala. And also the speech of Allah can be written. This is a proof to show that the speech of Allah can be written. As it's in the Mus'haf. Barakallahu feekum. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي Aynam. If it was an ink, yani, with where an ink is what you used to write. And that sea will finish before the speech of Allah finishes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who claims that the Qur'an is makhluk, created, his disbelief in, as it relates to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul fi surat al-tawbah, verse number 6, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى مَاذَا يَسْمَعَ Kalam Allah. Well, he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in, if anyone from the mushrikeen, the polytheists, seek your aid, seek your assistance, then aid them until they hear the kalam of Allah. So the verse in Surah Al Kahf shows that the kalam of Allah can be written. And in this verse here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that the speech of Allah can be heard. Hatta yasma'a kalam Allah. Until they 
hear the speech of Allah. So in this verse in Surah Tawbah, Barakallahu Fikum, is a proof that of the affirmation of the speech of Allah to Barakallahu Ta'ala, which is the Qur'an. Barakallahu Fikum. The Qur'an is the speech of Allah. Hatta yasma'a kalam Allah. And it can be heard. The Qur'an is from the sifat, the sifatu min sifatillah, and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore we affirm that the Qur'an can be heard, and the Qur'an can be uh, written, the Qur'an can be heard, and the Qur'an can be written. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed this in these verses. So the one who claims that that which is the Qur'an from the sifat, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed created, then this is indeed disbelief in the verses that have affirmed the sifat of the kalam for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, in Surah to Yasin, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُمْ فَيَكُونَ well, he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and verily, if he's command, he wants it to come about, anything he wants to come about, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, yaqul, he says, kun fayakun, yaqulu lahu kun fayakun, he says, be and it is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has affirmed here his speech. Yaqulu. I mean he said and he says subhanahu ta'ala. So this cannot be created by the speech of Allah. But rather is by the speech of Allah creation comes about. Kun fayakun. Be and it is. Shows the depth of the disbelief of the one that claims Barakalafikum that the Quran is makhluk. And what a despicable belief it is. Which is why the ulama, they say that the one who claims that the Quran is created, Barakallahu Fikum, is a disbeliever. Kharijan Millah. Barakallahu Fikum. A disbeliever out of the fold of Al Islam. And this also shows Barakallahu Fikum the importance of studying Aqeedah and studying the Kalam and the speech of the Ulama as it relates to the clarification of Creed. And that is that, like in Surah Al Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al Nahal, verse number 40, Inna ma qawluna li shay'in idha aradnahu an naqula lahu kun fayakun. Qawam al-Sunnah brings this verse here in Al-Hujjah Fi Bayan al-Mahajjah which is one of the books of the Sunnah important for the Talib al-Ilm to buy it and read it he mentions this verse in Surah uh, Al-Nahal verse number 40 Inna ma qawluna Indeed our speech for anything if we want it to come about that we say be and it is. He says, Ayy aradna khalqahu. This is Muhim. Aradna khalqahu wa ijadahu wa idharahu. He says, Rahimullahu ta'ala, Ayy, when we want it, its creation, it to be created, and we want it to become present, and we want it to be apparent. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, kun. So he says, and his speech, he says, so he, through his speech, the creation has come about. Not that his speech is created, subhanallah. فَقَوْلُهُ kun كَلَامُ Allah. So the statement of Allah, be. Be is the speech of Allah. وَصِفَتُهُ subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows you the despicable belief it is to say that the Qur'an is created. And 
when we look in the works of Imam Ahmed rahimullahu ta'ala in his masail where there are narrations as it relates to the statements of Imam Ahmed rahimullah in various affairs of aqidah is a masail and in there Imam Ahmed rahimullah mentions the proof and statements of uh, re- related to uh, the disbelief of the one who claims that the Quran is makhluk, is created. And that is that he says, Rahimullah Ta'ala. Or it is said, Sa'altu, and this is by Yaqub ibn Ibrahim al Dawraqi. Yaqub ibn Ibrahim al Dawraqi qal, he said, Yaqub, he said, Sa'altu Ahmed bin Hanbal amman yaqul al Quran makhluk. He said, I asked Imam Ahmed ta'ala, regarding the one that says that the Quran is created. Qala, faqal, kuntu la hatta qara'tu min al-Quran. He says, I never used to deem them to be disbelievers until I read a verse, this verse in the Quran. And that is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا إِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ after he read this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 120, before that he never deemed them to be kuffar. Now he does, after he read this verse. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And if you follow their desires, meaning the disbelievers, مِن بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After knowledge has reached you. After he read this verse, and also the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After of which knowledge has come to you. And also this, and that's in, barakallahu fikum, Surah Ali Imran, verse number 61. So Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 120. And Surah Ali Imran, verse number 61. And likewise the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa. Verse number 166 and Zalna Bi'ilmihi and Zalahu Bi'ilmihi. Where he said Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and he has revealed it Bi'ilmihi with his knowledge. So all of these verses, the, the verses in the verse in Surah Baqarah. And the verse in Surah Al-Imran and the verse in Surah Nisa, Imam Ahmed Rahimullah Ta'ala said that before he read these verses rather, all of them, before he read these verses, he would not have deemed the one who says the Quran is created as being a kafir, disbeliever. But after he read it, he, he, he held the position that they are kuffar. فَالْقُرْآنُ مِنْ إِلْمِ اللَّهِ Because the Quran is from the knowledge of Allah. وَمَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّ عِلْمُ اللَّهِ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ and whoever claims that the knowledge of Allah is created, then he is a disbeliever. بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ أَنزَلَهُ بِعِلْمِهِ أَنزَلَهُ بِعِلْمِهِ Revealed it from his knowledge, the Qur'an. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After that which has come to you from knowledge, yani from the Qur'an. فَالْقُرْآنُ مِنْ عِلْمِ اللَّهِ The Qur'an is from the knowledge of Allah. وَمَنْ زَعْمَ أَنَّ عِلْمَ اللَّهِ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ And whoever claims that the knowledge of Allah is created, then he is a kafir. So you can see the, the filth of this, this, this despicable belief. And you find this statement from Imam Ahmed in, in Tabaqat al-Hanabila, Volume 1. Barakallahu fikum. Tabaqat and Hanabila, volume 1, page number 414. So Imam Ahmed, rahimullah ta'ala, in various statements, he said, Man man, Al-Quranu min ilmi Allah, wa man za'ama anna al-ilm Allah, makhluqun faqad kafara billah. The one who claims that the knowledge of Allah, in the Quran, is created because the Quran is from the knowledge of Allah. 
who believes that is created, then he has disbelieved in Allah. He has disbelieved in Allah. So this statement of the Imams, rahimahullah ta'ala, Abi Zura and Abi Hatim, rahimahullah, is based upon verses in the Quran explicitly showing and stating that the speech of the regarding the speech of Allah and the Quran is the speech of Allah and the Quran is from the ilm from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever claims barakallahu fikum that that is created then they have indeed disbelieved in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that's the first point that's, all of that was point number one reality as it relates to today's lesson after that the second point the imams rahimahullah ta'ala they said وَمَنْ شَكَّ فِي كُفْرِهِ بِمَّنْ يَفْهَمُ فَهُوَ كَافِرُونَ وَمَنْ شَكَّ فِي كَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَوَقَفَ شَاكًا فِيهِ يَقُولُ لَا أَدْرِي مَخْلُوقٌ أَوْ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ فَهُوَ جَهْمِيٌ وَمَنْ وَقَفَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ جاهلا علم وبضع ولم يكفر ومن قال لفظي بالقرآن مخلوق فهو جهمي أو القرآن باللفظ مخلوق فهو جهمي وهي سيز رحمه الله رحمه الله they said that whoever doubts the unbelief, yani the disbelief of that person, the person after Barakallahu Fikum, he's understood these verses in the Quran and these proofs to affirm the speech of Allah. And whoever doubts that the person who, dis- who claims that the Quran is makhluk, created, is a disbeliever, whoever doubts that after having knowledge, of the reasons for the disbelief of that individual and the evidences they themselves have disbelieved. And he understands this matter. This is Muhim. Mimman yafhamu. He understands this affair. He understands the verses in Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Al Imran, Surah Al Nisa, the verses in Surah Al Kahf, the verse in Surah Al Mada, Tawbah. The verses in Surah Al-Nahal. Barakallahu fikum. He understands these verses and others, many verses in the Quran, and he understands that the Quran is the speech of Allah. And therefore, the one who claims that it is makhluk created is saying that a sifa attribute from the attributes of Allah is created. And this is disbelief in Allah. He understands this and yet he does not hold that person to be a disbeliever. They themselves are disbelievers. The proof has been established. They understood. And then he says, Rahimullah ta'ala, Barakallahu fikum, فَوَقَفَ شَاكًا فِيهِ يَقُولَ لَا أَدْرِي مَخْلُوقٌ أَمْ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ جَهْمِي The one who says that he has doubts in the speech of Allah, and he holds and he says, I do not know whether it is created or not created. Such a person is a jahmi. Such a person who has doubts regarding the speech of Allah. Saying that I do not know whether it is created or not created. Such a person is a jahmi. Such a person is a jahmi. And we know that the jahmiya, as we studied in many of our previous lessons, they are the foremost of those who held that the Quran was created, the Jahmiyyah. And then it was taken and adopted by the Mu'tazila. And the Mu'tazila became the ones that were most prominent as it relates to the false claim that the Quran, which is the Kalam of Allah, is created. We are Billah. And then he says, Rahimullah ta'ala, 
ومن وقف. Now we're gonna we've dealt with the affair of the 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 Quran or those claiming that the Quran is created. What the Imams do now here, they mention they mention three general positions as it relates to the Quran. So for those who are taking notes, then we can write now the three deviances as it relates to the Quran. We can summarize it and mention the three deviances as it relates to the Quran. And the first deviance is the one that we've finished with now, which is the clear statement of the Jahmiyyah, who claim that the Quran is created. That's the first deviant position as it relates to the Quran. And that is the position of uh, the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila, and indirectly the Asha'ira themselves with their erroneous rhetoric which clearly indicates and necessitates that the Quran is not the speech of Allah so that's the first those who say that the Quran is created the second here where the Imam he says this is number two وَمَنْ وَقَفَ فِي الْقُرْآنَ جَاهِلًا أُلِّمْ وَبُدِّعْ وَلَمْ يُكَفِّرْ This is the second position. And that is the waqifiyya. And that is those who you can say are fences. I call them fences. Those who stand on the fence. They don't go either any which way. And they're ignorant. They are taught. They stand. They don't take a clear position regarding the Quran. They say we do not say the Quran is created. They say, and they say that we do not say the Quran is not creative. Created. Uh, this is the waqifiyah. This is that fence taking the fence, not taking a position, which, which is indeed is a position. Which is why the Imams they say, Rahimullah Taala, ulim wa budde. He is educated, and deemed the innovator but he's not deemed the disbeliever and this is the second deviance as it relates to the those who held uh, erroneous beliefs regarding the quran and that is the those, those who say that they do not say the quran is created and they do not say that the quran is not created they're fencing and they they are this is from bidah because this is a position from the bidah uh, this is a position that the 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 Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not hold, and this is a this is a position that the Sahaba radiyallahu taala anhum did not hold, and neither did the Salaf or this Ummah Umumen. So this waqafiyah, this fencing position, is a, a position of bid'ah. It's an innovative position, and it's a position which spreads doubt, as it relates to the speech of Allah wa taala the Quran. So therefore, Imam Ahmed and others have deemed this individual who takes his uh, fencing position as a mubtadi, as a person of bid'ah. And then they mention, he met, they mention the third category, the third position uh, for, for regarding the, the those who deviated uh, regarding the speech of Allah, the Qur'an. They said, Rahimullah, وَمَنْ قَالَ لَفْ ذِي بِالْقُرْآنِ مَخْلُوقٍ فَهُوَ جَهْمِيٌ أَوِ الْقُرْآنُ بِلَفْذِ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ جَهْمِيٌ And that is that whoever says that my utterance of the Qur'an is created. That my utterance of the Qur'an is created. Whoever says that, then they are jahmi themselves. They are like the first group. Or the one who says... When I utter the Quran, the Quran is created. For who a jahmiyun? He is also a jahmi. And this is a question that one of our beloved brothers asked a couple of weeks ago. And that is saying that the utterance or the ones the speak when one recites the Quran, then they say that it's created. This is the call of the Jahmiyyah. This is indeed trying uh, uh, a long route, a long route. To the root and position of the Jahmiyyah. 
but it still comes to the end same result and that is saying that the Quran is makhluk. This third point, Barakallahu Feekum, the third group, we're going to go into some detail regarding this group. But I want to just quickly revise the three groups. The first group are the ones who say that it's created. The second group are those who 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 take a, 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 no, a, a no position, they claim, a, standing on the fence. That's what they call waqafiyah. They're just standing, they've not taken a position. They say they don't know the, they don't say the Quran is created and they don't say that the Quran is not created. And this is a position of bidah, and these are the person who takes this position is a mubtadi. The second an, an innovator. The third is a lavdiya. They call them a lavdiya. And they are the people who who try to be clever and say they don't say that they say we don't say the Quran is created, but my utterance of the Quran is created. Which really means that they're saying that the Quran is created, but in a long way, as opposed to the first group. So they're the love the, uh, and they, the imams have said that they are jahmi, that they are following the way of the jahmiya, except they've taken a longer route to get there. They've taken a longer route to get there. We're going to talk more about this group here, the love the, but in later Allah. And Shaykh and Ubaid Al Jabri, Hafidullah Ta'ala, in many sittings and in Durus, when he's talking about this affair of the Lavdiya, he brings uh, a verse in the Quran which um, uh, is a reason why the statement of the Lavdiya, those who say that the, the utterance is. Um, is created is a, is is indeed rebuked by the ulama of the salaf and that verse is in surah al-baqarah sajilu it's an important verse surah al-baqarah verse 104 surah al-baqarah verse 104 and likewise surah an-nisa surah an-nisa verse number 46 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-baqarah Verse 104, Ya Yuladina Amanu, let a cool raina, or cool in Durna was mau, Walil Kafirina Adabun Alim. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, O you who believe, do not say raina, do not say raina, and raina is a statement we had which, which can mean good and can mean bad. It has ihtimalain. It has two possible meanings. It can have a good meaning and it can have a bad meaning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited the believers from following the Jews, which is again shown in, in Surah An-Nisa verse 46. Allah has prohibited us from following the way of the Jews because the Jews, they said to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ra'ina, and Ra'ina in Hebrew has a negative disrespectful meaning. Ra'ina in Hebrew has a negative and disrespectful meaning. Allah subhanahu wa says, Ya yu ladina amanu, la taqulu ra'ina, la taqulu ra'ina, wa qulu nzurna, wa sma'u. But rather say clearly, say clearly, barakallahu fikum, Make us unzurna, uh, but say make us understand and listen. Say your statement clearly without any obscurity. And the Jews will say to the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, trying to be clever, ra'ina, which has a meaning of listen, but also has a meaning in Hebrew of a disrespect, belittling way to speak to an individual. And that's what the Jews, they did with the Messenger Sallallahu And the affair of Lavdiyya, this third group, falls into this category. Why? Because by saying, my utterance of the Qur'an or recitation of the Qur'an is created, this is using a term which has 
possible meanings. It can have a good meaning and it can have a bad meaning. And the Jahmiyyah, they use this obscure statement, my, st my recitation or my utterance of the Qur'an is created in order to capture people and to fool people and deceive them so they can follow them in the first category and that is saying that the Qur'an is created without them realizing. So this is the verse that Shaykhana Barakallahu Fikum used to repeat whenever he would explain this issue of the Lavdiyya. And this shows us also that the Salafi has to be wadih. The Salafi has to say a statement that is clear, that does not have any negative or incorrect connotation or meaning. The Quran is clear, the Sunnah is clear, and we have to be people of clarity. Taraktukum Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala al bayda he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we have left you with something that is clear, a path that is clear. Layluha kan nahariha. Its night is clear like the day is clear. La yazigu anha illa halik. None deviates from it except the perished, destroyed one. Naqiyya, it's clear. The path is clear, so our speech has to be clear. The statement of the Lavdiyya is not clear. Because it has a good true meaning and it has a false meaning. Which is why the one that says that the Quran is makhluk, uh, the one that says that the utterance of the Quran, love thee, bil Quran makhluk, has indeed fallen into where of the Jahmiyyah. Has fallen into where of the Jahmiyyah. And the, the, the Jahmiyyah have placed that there in order to fool the individuals and fool the people who are ignorant. So this is a very dangerous, even more dangerous than the first position. Because it has a possible good meaning that it could come from if one explains it. So what is our position as people of the Sunnah as it relates to this? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala in Majmur Fatawa, volume number 12. So if we go back to volume number 12 in Majmur Fatawa, page 208 and 209. I believe, Nam. Shaykh Islam mentions the statement, Man qala lafdi bil Quran. Whoever says that my utterance of the Quran, wa tilawati, o qiraati makhluqa, that my recitation or verbalization of the Quran is created for who a jahmi. So he's a jahmi, as mentioned by Abu Hatim al Razi and Abi Zura rahimahullah ta'ala. So the one who says that my utterance is uh, uh, created or my recitation is created of the Qur'an is created, then they're jahmi. They're, they're saying this, agreeing with the jahmiyyah. وَمَنْ قَالْ Now this is an important addition here. So write down, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. He says, وَمَنْ قَالْ And whoever says, إِنَّهُ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ فَهُوَ مُبْتَدِئٍ And the one who says that my utterance is not created. My utterance of the Quran is not created. Then he is an innovator. This may sound confusing. But no it shouldn't. My dear beloved brothers and sisters. Because the one who says that term is an innovative term in its essence. My utterance is created. My utterance is not created. The Salaf never said this. Because it's not clear what the utterance means. What saying that your recitation is not clear what is meant. By you making a statement to say that it is created, you've agreed with the Jahmiyyah. And by you saying that your utterance or your recitation is not created, it's an innovation that you said that in the first place. It's not as bad as the first, but it's an innovation. So the position of the person of the Sunnah, is that they say, if somebody says to you, is your utterance of the Qur'an created? You say to them, what do you mean? What do you mean by utterance of the Qur'an? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la taqulu ra'ina, wa qulu nzurna wa sma'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Qur'an, 
O you who believe, do not say ra'ina, meaning do not say obs- mention obscure wordings, wordings which have good or bad meanings, but say clear wordings. Listen and 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 teach us. Amen. So we are going to say to you, if you ask us that question, what do you mean by love the Quran, love the makhluk? What do you mean by my utterance is created? If you mean, if you mean that that with the matlu that which is recited like when i say alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin if you say that is created no it's not created that's the speech of allah but if you mean barakallahu fikum my saliva that comes out when i or the air that i bring i breathe, I, I i puff when i speak or exhale when i speak or you mean my sa- the sound of my voice? Yeah, that's created. But what I'm reciting is not. Which is why the Salaf, they will say that that which I recite is from the words of Allah. It's the speech of Allah. But the sound is from the Qari. It's from the one that's reciting it. Me. So we ask for tafsir, we ask for what is intended behind, behind that statement. Which is why the ulama held that the person who says straight away, Oh no, no, I love the uh, ghayr makhluq. The utterance of my Quran is ghayr makhluq. It's not created. Which means you fall into innovation. So therefore we say the detailed explanation and detailed statement that if you mean the matlu that which is recited from the Quran, it's the speech of Allah. If you mean the sound of my voice, and the air and the saliva that may come out of my, my mouth when I, when I recite, then that is created. So this shows you the impl- importance of clarity, the importance of being clear. And these are the three Barakalafikum deviant positions, from the many positions in fact, but these are the three that the Imams have mentioned. And I repeat, the first one is the, what, those who say that the Quran is created. The second are those who take the fencing position. The fences, I call them, those who take the position of no position, not saying that the Quran is created, and not saying that the Quran is not, not created, they are innovators. And the third is the position of those who say that my utterance or my speech is created, and they are Jahmi. These are the people who have indeed agreed with the Jahmiya. And we can add a fourth, and that is those who say that uh, my utterance is not created, this is bid'ah. This is uh, the person who says is a mubtadi', as mentioned by Sheikh Al Islam. Uh, this person is an innovator, as mentioned by Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah taala in uh, uh, Majmu Fatawa. And this barakalafikum is based upon the statement of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala: "Yehu ladina aminu la taqulu ra'ina wa qulu indurna wa smau." Oh, you who believe, do not say ra'ina. Do not mention statements with um, uh, possible. Uh, truth and possible falsehood in it, but rather say a statement that is clear. And this is the position of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. Hadu Allahu A'lam. And with this, we conclude. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Wa barak ala nabina Muhammad 